you know, just imagine all you know all the all the players that are kind of getting to that point where their kids are starting to come through. Don't just bring your son along to the event. Bring your daughter as well. You know, she's probably going to have a great time. Welcome everyone to another episode of Down Under Paintball. This is episode 13, lucky for some, unlucky for others. Luckily for us, this week we're going to sit down with Amanda Andrews, my first female baller on the show. Amanda comes from Victoria, having played on lots of teams all around the country, New Zealand, in Asia as well. For a while there, there wasn't an event in Australia that didn't see a roster featuring her. After having a bit of a break for the sport, Amanda's back now working with Refs Inc. You mainly see her now at the Sapper events or events across Victoria. Thanks everyone for tuning in and I hope you enjoy this episode of Down Under Paintball. Joining me this week, I have Amanda Andrews. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for taking the time and sitting down with us. Anytime, anytime. So uh, where are you calling in from today? I'm in Victoria, just on the outskirts of Melbourne. Yeah, nice. It's uh, raining down there. <laughs> Has been most of the weekend. It is pretty cold at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's like I think it's cold here, but yeah, it's nothing like Melbourne. It's uh, <laughs> you guys yeah, have. Yeah, we've uh, been under I think under 12 degrees most of the weekend. So um, yeah, not really sit outside weather. <laughs> no, it's my. It sounds like my. Yeah, I'm getting over the summers up in Sydney. It's like 40 degrees nonstop, but yeah, I could I could do with some Melbourne winters, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how, how have you been handling isolation, getting through it? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Um, I'm pretty lucky. I, I live by myself, um, so I don't have, you know, people around constantly. I've got a few friends that are, you know, just about ready to kill their other half or, or family. So I think I'm pretty lucky in that regard. But um, yeah, it's different, that's for sure. Something I'm not used to. Yeah, no, it'll, it'll change things. Uh, yeah, going into the future, it'll, it'll mm-hmm. change things how we just live our lives. I think. It, Absolutely. It'll be a lot more of a lot more Skype calls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot more working from home. <laughs> oh, could be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Bit, bit I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, for those uh, that don't know you, why don't you just give us a little bit of a, a background and, and maybe let us know, yeah, how you got started in the sport? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm currently um, one of the senior refs uh, for Refs Inc. Um, some people know me as Crash. That's uh, my other name, I guess, that I go by. But, um, yeah, I think I've been in paintball for, oh, going to say, about 13 years, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, listening to Danny's episode recently, um, he said that, you know, things kind of started kicking off again in Victoria around 2006. And I think it was probably just after that, um, after it became legal again, when I started playing uh, down here in Vic. Um, I think I started probably quite similar to most people, just at, at a punter event. Um, my brother-in-law, Tristan, had his, I think it was his 30th birthday, and we went to Moama um, out at the punter field there. And, and that was, yeah, my first taste at paintball really really loved it um as did my brother-in-law Tristan we both kind of really enjoyed it and thought oh this is really cool you know let's see what else is out there in paintball let's see see what what we can do and it was just at the same time that um flip in extreme um in Geelong down here in Vic was starting up his league um so we put together a team of players that had None of us had ever played any type of tournament paintball before. I don't think I'd even seen tournament paintball before. We rocked up for our first league night. I think we played the um, extreme team our very first night and <laughs> got absolutely smacked. Um, but yeah, we kept going back and, yeah, that was kind of the first taste of tournament paintball we had. It was really good. Yeah, they were, uh, that was a good team, the Jolling Extreme Boys. So it would have been a good, uh, yeah, good um, you know, learning curve to, to, oh, get, to go up against those guys. <laughs> And I think it was good, you know, to go in and, and play a, a really top team to start with. It kind of really set the scene for, for us and, and set our expectations pretty high. But, um, yeah, we really enjoyed it, even though I think we barely won a game for maybe the first two seasons we played there. Um, still really enjoyed it and went back every week, week in, week out. Yeah, and that was an indoor field there, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was absolutely huge field. Um, 
really, I, I guess, you know, pretty modern compared to some of the other fields that are around, um, probably particularly down here. But, uh, yeah, Flip was running, I think he was running Ego 7s as his field markers. Um, you know, instead of overalls, everyone had pants and jerseys. Um, you know, the bunkers were always really well maintained. And, yeah, it was it was really good. It was, a, a, I guess, a really good introduction to the sport um, for us not having played before and not really knowing what tournament paintball was to come in and, and you know, be able to play at that level on that type of field was really great. Yeah, I I got to go down there. I think it was in 2008. And, yeah, it was it was it blew me away. Like, I had yeah. so much fun at that field. The, the training sessions we had, you know, during the week before the event, Mm-hmm. It was just so cool to have, uh, like, the only indoor fields I've played at in Sydney are tiny. Um, you can mm-hmm. barely fit a three-man field on it. So having something like that and being able to play five days or seven days a week, it would uh, <laughs> be awesome. Yeah. Well, I was probably a little bit too far away to, to play that often. But, um, yeah, I think it was about an hour and a half drive away from here. And we used to oh, okay. go down, like, Wednesday night every week. But, um, yeah, it was, it was really good. Did you play that, um, the tournament that Philip had there? Yeah, the yeah. uh, I was um, yeah, was it the indoor X Bowl Championship or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I played that event. It was awesome. That was my yeah. kind of uh, you know, proper tourney, I think. Yeah, it was good. Um, oh, it, indoors always different. It's uh, yeah, yeah just mm. strange, <laughs> strange <laughs> feeling playing indoors. Yeah, very strange. Um, so, sorry, guys. I was, I was just gonna say, does is the field still operating? Like. No, sure? no. Uh, I'm not sure when it closed, but um, I think, yeah, Flip had some problems with a landlord or something. I don't really know the full story, but, yeah, field closed. And, unfortunately, um, yeah, it didn't really relocate. It just fizzled out. And, yeah, Flip's uh, not in the sport anymore that I know of. I think he did have um, some medical issues recently with a car accident or something. So, yeah, uh, last I heard, he's doing all right, but yeah, not in the sport anymore. Yeah, no, he puts up a lot of posts of his son riding uh, dirt bikes and stuff, so it's uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, no, it's uh, I'll, he's definitely someone that's on my list to to catch up with. Yeah, that'd be a good chat. Yeah, so how did you um, you know, you said you were going out um, yeah, so it was a tournament that you jumped straight into, or just just like a. A training sort of session How, yeah, so, so it, was, um, that was, it was a league so yeah um, I think it was like a kind of round robin thing played a different team each week and um, yeah it's like a speedball format kind of thing I think from uh, from memory it was like half an hour on the clock or something like that um, yeah it was a little bit different to I guess some of the other tournaments that we then went and played after that but um, that was kind of the first introduction and then at the same time as that running, we're also, you know, traveling out to Moama and playing the three mans and five mans and seven mans and whatever else that, um, I think it's Pete Spence. Um, yeah, all the kind of events that he was having there as well. And that was, that was probably my introduction to more of a, an outdoor field and how that runs. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day. It's, it's interesting thinking back to the way that, um, those tournaments ran where, you know, everyone would kind of ref each other. It wasn't, um, maybe the rules were not as <laughs> important <laughs> as they are for events now. Like I remember refing, um, that was probably the first time I ever refed, but I remember refing other teams and not really knowing what the hell I was doing, not even sure what to call out, what not to call out. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, it depends on the level. Um uh, and what's on the line if there's a lot of prize money people might care a bit more but if it's yeah. just sort of a, a fun event then um sometimes that can make it a bit more fun and getting out there and yeah. repping and stuff like that's an easy it's a good way to learn uh watching other people play yeah yeah well uh, you know back then i was probably just happy to be on the field didn't matter what i was doing <laughs> yeah. yeah picking up pods yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so moama that's is that in new south wales it is, yeah. Right. So I think Chuka is the town um, on the Victorian side, but Moama is kind of where the field is, and that's just across the border. So I think um, back in kind of Danny's days, um, he was talking about, you know, having to go and play Moama for events and stuff. So I think before it became legal again in Vic, um, that's where everyone went to go play. We'd, yeah, travel across the border and play Moama. Yeah, definitely 
I, I remember yeah, it was the same. A lot of people traveled south from, mm. from Sydney, but I just I never made it to that. But it, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a testing field. Um, interesting setup. And yeah, I think I can't, I can't remember the years it ran for, but ran for a few years. Is I think of it, I think it was three man first, and then went to five man. Um, with a couple of seven man events in there as well, but yeah, it was a really interesting, interesting series that he used to run. I think it was three or four times a year. And, you know, for, for the team that I was playing on as kind of like a junior team, it was really great to go out and get some experience against other people coming from all over, you know, New South Wales and Victoria. It was interesting. So who, who was that team that you were playing with? That was Melbourne Mayhem. So, um, yeah, my, my brother-in-law Tristan started Mayhem um, when we first got into playing. I think it ran probably for about maybe about five or six years. Um, different people came and went kind of over that time. There was a couple of people that's, that, that were there for, for the long haul. But, yeah, generally there was a, you know, flow of people coming into the team. It was a really good team um, for some of the tournaments in Victoria that, you know, I guess a bit more of a newer team. We're playing against a lot of teams that have been around for years, kind of like the Rat Pack, um, Havoc Red and Havoc Blue. Um, teams have been playing for a long time, and we kind of came in as, I guess, a bit more of fresh blood, and we used to pick up players that, you know, hadn't really played before, so it was a really good team for people to kind of flow into, um, yeah, before going on to some more experience playing. Yeah, okay. Are they still around, Melbourne and Mayhem? No, no. I think I think team disbanded... Yeah, probably 2012, 2013 maybe. Everyone kind of went their own ways. And, and at the time, there was a lot of other teams starting up too. So all the players kind of moved on to other teams. But I think that was around the time Hustle was, was getting started as well. So, yeah, we lost okay. a few players to Hustle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I've hit hard. So the team disbanded and never really got back together again. So, so you mentioned uh, you were playing against Havoc. Is that... Like, I've seen Havoc from South Australia. Is that the same team? Were they no. being based there? Yeah, uh, different team, I think. They're not okay. playing anymore, but it was, um, like, Neil Wheatley and some of his mates and um, kind of that crew, they were playing on that team. Kind of the uh, same type of people as Rat Pack. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, sweet. It's, um, yeah, uh, some team names have been recycled from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> Things pop up every now and then. You're like, oh, I've heard of that before. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, what was your, you know, once uh, you started losing players to, to hustle and things like that, what, what was your next step from there? Um, yeah, yeah, for for me, I kind of, I think I just played on a few different teams for a while. So probably around the same time I started going up to Sydney and um, just playing on a few teams up there, guesting um, just to get a taste of something a little bit different. And I think it was, that was probably about the time that I joined Legion. Um, so... Yeah, I remember I went and played one of the ACT events with them um, just to see how it would go. And, yeah, I had a fantastic time. Gelled really well with the team. Um, Chimpy played on, played with them. And, yeah, he, him and I kind of played with Legion for a few years after that. Yeah, it was a really good team. I really enjoyed it. A lot of, lot of fun on Legion. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if I remember correctly, you guys had a, had a – Legion had a special on the uh, Dirt Earth Short Bus as well. <laughs> I will say that uh, was all filmed before I joined the team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, I'm not featured in that, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if uh, anyone listening wants to check that out, I'll uh, I'll try and find find it and drop it in the show notes. That's uh, it's that's around a, somewhere, and it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, I think I think everyone's probably made it on the short bus at one point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was playing at that, that that time anyway. <laughs> yeah. That was good, having that, having Dirt and Rob come out and film some of the events and stuff. Yeah, it's really good to, I guess, see some Aussie faces um, and Aussie players up on up on the US DVDs. It was good. Yeah, no, it's just crazy to think that, um, you know, I uh, watch Will McDonald's, uh, the collection. I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube. He's <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah actually yeah you were watching today i saw you yeah. <laughs> drop in yeah um but he uh you know he mentions a lot about that like monkey with a gun and dirt it's just such a um it was such a cool thing back then but it's just not the way that we consume media anymore unfortunately no, no so different um but there's so much there's so so much great stuff happening yeah like, like wimpy's um you know collection 
you know, he's starting the the webcast happening over in South Australia for the piano events, you know, just all off his own back. Um, Mike with the live webcast from Sevens, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, Dwayne with um, PBHQ Monday nights, all those kind of things, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to think that we have all that available now. And, <clears throat> you know, if more of that had been around when I kind of started in the sport, you know, I think it would have been fantastic and I would have just been consuming it as much as I can. <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, I guess it's a bit easier for for places to put out media now. Like the yeah. you know I spent a bit of time with with Rob from Dirta and just like seeing just what he had to go through to oh, to get to produce those things. Yeah, days and days, wow. and like a two awesome. minute mm. yeah, like a two minute clip from like ten hours of footage. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. yeah. oh, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so how did uh you know you said you started traveling up to Sydney? Was that just something that you like? just decided you wanted to broaden your horizons a bit or, or were yeah. you just not, not enjoying Melbourne? <laughs> um, I think I think I just wanted a bit of a change. Um, I was playing, had been playing a little bit at World Series, um, the another indoor field that we had going down there with Mayhem. Um, we used to do a little bit of um, a league there, like a three-man league. And, yeah, outside of that, there wasn't heats happening in Vic. We didn't have pavs at that point. Um, it was mostly kind of just one-off events. There wasn't any real um, series happening. Um, yeah, and I just, I guess, wanted a bit more of a challenge. I'd, I'd heard about Super 7s. There wasn't a lot of Vic players going up and playing and definitely no Vic teams at that point and just really interested to see what it was all about. So I went up um, and I think, I think I went and potted for, I think – maybe Russ, Russ Bromley. Um, I'd known yep. him. He'd come and played a couple of events down in Vic with us. And I think I went and potted for um, x Fires when Russ was playing. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, yeah, next next event I was up playing with Legion. And, yeah, I had a great time after that. Oh, awesome. It's, um, yeah, it's cool just seeing people that do that. They they travel all the way to a different state just to – just to experience it it's it's uh mm-hmm. it's dedication it's good good to see <laughs> yeah yeah and I think um yeah as a player who didn't really have a team at that point it was a good opportunity to go and see what was happening without having to commit to playing with people I didn't know and you know didn't know what the expectations were and all that so it was yeah good to go and experience it first and then go and play yeah it's um it's a bit like I, I find it a bit strange. Like, what, what is the scene like in in Victoria? It just seems like, um, like a lot of people say that there's not much going on from time to time. Like, is there? Or well, back then, was there? It sounds like there's a lot of fields. Was there much of a yeah. tournament scene there? At, at that point, not really. We had a lot of fields, but not a lot of unity. Um, we had yeah, World Series indoor paintball that had a. I think we had a three man league, but it was mostly kind of for new players. Um. There was uh, Karen Downs, and they mostly had club days. Um, Sniper's Den was just opening at that point, and they didn't really have a tournament that I remember, like a, a regular tournament. And then um, PAVs kind of started, so that the um, People Association of Victoria, which is now Vic Fives, um, I think they're in their 10th year this year, so, yeah, must have been around 2010, um, that they started up, and that's kind of the first opportunity where there was a more of a regular paintball tournament series happening down in Vic that I remember I mean there may have been others but yeah that that was kind of the first time we had something a bit more regular in tournament paintball um there was a lot of bushball happening and a lot of regular bushball but not heaps of tawny ball so yeah that was the start of it and yeah as I think I mentioned before but it started as a traveling tournament going to each of the fields so um world series paint, indoor paintball used to have a have an event. Um, I think Karen Downs had an event. I think Danny out at Coldstream did, and um, Sniper's Den as well. And then, yeah, just over the years, um, it's changed a little bit the the format and everything. And yeah, as the some of the other fields closed down or, or weren't as popular, it kind of now it just sits, sits at Sniper's Den. But we used to have a lot of fields, but um, yeah, Karen Downs doesn't really. 20 players anymore. I don't know if it's still operating. Um, I think World Series no longer has 20 ball either. I think that's just puntable now. Again, I'm not even sure if it's still operating. So it's mo- mostly just um, Coldstream and Sniper's Den. They're kind of the two big fields now that we have in Vic. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's 
it's yeah it's just a, a bit of a shame really some i guess like i i said it on the episode with danny we've brought it up a couple of times but yeah i just don't uh i don't blame some field owners sometimes for not, mm. not allowing mm. 20, 20 yeah, players cause yeah we're, we're, when pavs first started um we used to have um i guess it was a committee that used to run it um made up of the field owners and then we had refs as well represented and um some player reps as well and, and i was for i think a year i was one of the players reps and yeah it was it gave me a perspective a perspective on um how much i guess how much it costs and how much effort goes into hosting a tourney at a at a field and you know what the field operators kind of go into just to get that up and running it definitely um yeah it gave me a lot to think about that yeah i just hadn't realized what really goes into it and and the cost of it as well so that was interesting yeah it's um we're always i'll, I'll probably say it every episode but i'm going to say it again but yeah we've got to be so thankful for anyone that wants to host uh host tournament oh, absolutely. tournament yeah. paintball absolutely so, yeah <laughs> what well, you mentioned um you mentioned woods ball being a big thing have you ever gotten into that no it's just not really my thing yeah, I just, yeah, never really been interested, to be honest. I don't know. I, I think I like the excitement um, and the speed of, of Tawny Ball a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm with you there. Yeah. <laughs> not, not putting anything on, uh, on Woods Ball, but I just, yeah. Yeah, You know, some, some people absolutely love it and get so much out of it. And, you know, I, I, I feel I absolutely can see why they love it. And, you know, but it's just not really my thing. <laughs> Yeah, now give me a, 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 a tournament feel where I can sort of see other bunkers and it's easy to work out. Sometimes I get a bit lost on those uh, yeah. big woods fields. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I hate it so, as well, so the idea of like, you know, walking through the bush doesn't really excite me. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, maybe it says more about me though as a person than, uh, than anything to do with woods ball. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've, I remember seeing you a few times over overseas. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at world cup uh how many times did you end up end up getting over over there yeah oh my god i absolutely loved world cup um i think three three years i went i think i first time i went i played with um i think it was rage city um no actually that was the second time first time i went i played with hustle and that was at kl um outdoors, outdoors. Yeah. yeah mud so much mud. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That's, that's what I remember most from that event. It was so hot and so muddy. Um, but yeah, I had an absolutely full. And went back the following year. Played with um, Rage City in Langkawi in that in the indoor field there. Um, that was equally as hot, but very slippery. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like ice skating across the. It dark. was yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah, I think the last time I went over, I played with Ronan. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So Japanese that was. Thing? Are they? Sorry. Ronan? No, not Japanese. They had some Japanese players on them. We, yeah, oh, the, I think the team that I played on, we had people from all over the world. There was, I think, a German guy. Um, there was me and one other Aussie. Dennis? Um, was it Dennis? Dennis, yep. We had yep. Dennis on the team as well. A um, couple of the locals too. Yeah, it was it was definitely a throw together team, but my gosh, had so much fun playing with them. Um, really great team to hang out with. Um, really great team to play with. Yeah. Had a ball, an absolute ball. Yeah, and yeah, you said you play Rage City, so shout out to mm-hmm. Russ Bromley. I don't know if he tunes yep. in, but uh, yeah, good, good bloke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I play a couple of events with Rage. Um, I think a, did I think I played a Super Sevens with them at some point, maybe one or two rounds. I don't know. I struggle sometimes to remember. Um, you know, it's a long time, <laughs> but yeah, definitely went and played um, World Cup with them, and that was really fun as well. Um, absolutely lovely bunch of guys uh still you know bump into them every now and then and yeah yeah had a really great time playing with him was uh was that the year that russ uh he crashed his it was before the event <laughs> yeah and ended up just covered in bandages or something yeah yeah, yeah he had a, a bit of a i think <laughs> we, we all had scooters and um every one of us had a bit of an accident at some point um russ a bit more so than everyone else <laughs> Yeah, oh poor fella. That's yeah. That's why I always avoided those because I thought I'm not flying all the way out here spending all this money and then uh, gonna sit on the sidelines and watch. I, I think in hindsight, um, scooters were probably not a great idea. And I, I know I got one every year I went, but 
I think if I went back now, I yeah, I'd just just pay for the taxi. <laughs> yeah, <I'd do> <laughs> cheap it. enough. <laughs> well, uh, a question that I sort of skipped over, something um, that we we we've gone a bit far from. But do you remember what the first gun that you were, you were shooting was? Yeah, yeah, I still got it actually. It was a an Ego Seven. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> this one I owned. Um, yeah, I still got it more for probably sentimental value than anything else. It's not really worth anything, and I actually don't even know if it shoots anymore. It's been in the safe for many, many years. <laughs> yeah, so uh, oh, there are. Uh, it's all, like I, I reckon everyone should do it. You got to keep your first gun, just just so you know where where you started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I really liked the Ego Seven. I think I had an Ego Eight at one point, and after that, uh, I switched over to shoot my Dev. Yep. Yeah, nice. It's uh. Yeah. Is the way things are going, everyone these days is saying you've got to choose Australian, so MacDev's the way to go. That's right, you know, and the, and the guys are fantastic. You you know, any any issues or anything, you give them a call and they're so happy to help. And, and to be able to talk to the people who actually manufacture, our, um, you know, the gear and, and the parts and, you know, know that product inside out is just fantastic, you know. It's great. Fantastic service from them. Yeah, that's it's good to hear. I uh. Yeah, no, didn't really get much of a chance to to use their guns, but uh, yeah, it would have been cool to to shoot Aussie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, you know, you, you you've rattled off quite a few team names that you've played for. Was that just something that you you always was that like through your choosing to just play on a bunch of different teams or or uh? Yeah, yeah. I um. Yeah, I think I think because I spent quite a few years with Mayhem initially, um, and then I I don't know I just wanted to do different things to to what some of the teams down in Vic were doing. You know, I wanted to go up to Super Sevens and play up there. I wanted to go to ACT and play, and um, you know, and go to WCA and things like that. And there wasn't a lot of teams in Vic that were doing that. Um, and you know, some of the more local teams kind of wanted players that could train with them and and things. So you know, I kind of just jumped on a few teams here and there and and played some different people and play the events that I wanted to play when I wanted to play them and had an absolutely fantastic time. And yeah, Legion kind of were the main team that I played in Super 7s. Um, and then, yeah, after they, we kind of disbanded, I don't even know how many years ago now, maybe about four or five years ago. I think the team kind of just, yeah, ran its natural course and everyone kind of went their separate ways. We had a few players that were getting poached by some of the pro teams. Um, we were in semi-pro at the time. So yeah, that was kind of, the end of that and yeah technically i am on eskimo brothers at the moment i have a jersey i've played one event with them it's hoping to play another one this year but we'll see how that goes yeah no it's uh i guess once you once you're in on that it's hard to hard to get away sounds like from the eskimo brothers yeah and it's such a fantastic idea if we'd had something you know kind of similar when I was starting out um, and, and wanting to go and play those those other events outside of Victoria, you know, that would have been just the perfect platform for me to do it. Um, you know, I didn't have heaps of trouble finding teams to play on, but, you know, it did rely on knowing someone who knows someone who knows someone who needs a player and, and things like that. Whereas now, you know, Eskimo Brothers is fantastic. You know, players had the opportunity to go, hey, yeah, I want to play. Put your hand up, jump on a team, off you go. Yeah, and it, it's like it's funny you say that because because before that we we used to see so many Victorian at, uh, players at the Super Sevens, but just sprinkled into different teams. Yeah. That I, I'm sure if it, if they all sort of had like you say a platform like that that they could jump on, they mm-hmm. you guys probably would play together more often. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And there, and there was a few of us playing around. You know, there was always kind of one team and then a, a sprinkle of other players as well up there. Yeah, did you, did you travel anywhere else around uh, Australia besides uh, the East Coast? Yeah, uh, Sapa. I think I went and played a Sapa. Um, it's probably it in Australia, actually. I Yeah, I don't think I ever actually played in Queensland. I've reffed up there a bit now, but I don't think I ever played up there. Um, played in Auckland a couple of times. That was really interesting. You know, really great guys over in Auckland, the... Um, the New Zealand paintball scene's quite similar to the Australian scene, and yeah, some fantastic players over there. So it was exciting to go and play over there. Yeah, who did you play with in Auckland? Um, I think the first time I went, uh, I think we just had a couple of throw together teams. 
Um, all, all of Victorians, but yeah, all from kind of separate teams. And we went and played an event over there. And I think the second time I went, possibly with Hustle, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. Still, still cool. I. Mm. Uh, where was it in Auckland? Do you remember? Um, it was a field not far from the airport, I think. Yeah. Not okay. Uh, Asylum. That sounds about right. Asylum paintball, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... Yeah, it's um, I think the fields are the fields I played at in New Zealand were always just throw together ones like they were in people's backyards pretty much. So. <laughs> yeah, um, different laws. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, just throw a bit of netting up on a on a soccer oval and you've got a field. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but it's crazy. I I just think that it's crazy that they have laws like that and. I think the whole whole country should be playing paintball if it was that yeah. easy. <laughs> we, we've actually got a field down here um, in Maui out in the country where they've got a license out at um, a soccer oval. And we go out and we put we – I think it's been a while since we've played out there, but um, uh, Flash and his team H2O are kind of based there. And, yeah, we put up the – well, they put up the netting – um, you know, bring the compressor out and set up the field out on the soccer pitch and the grass is always absolutely fantastic because it's very well taken care of. They've got a little um, clubhouse there. It's, yeah, it's the only kind of time I've ever seen that happening in, in Australia where, you know, you can just go out and play on the footy oval. Yeah, and it'd be, uh, it'd be I'm sure if I was, like, you know, in my under-10s soccer team and I'm, I'm trying to play a game and there's uh, paintballs everywhere. <laughs> it'd be, uh, very interesting. It'd be a bit different, yeah, that's, that's yeah. cool um so like you know if anyone wants to do the, yeah you said you don't know if they still run like would that be something that people could go along to or or is it only oh, yeah yeah like people just rock up and watch there was you know no it was just yeah just rock up park your car waddle over and have a look there was no um entry or anything like that you know obviously it was all pitted off um for the players and nets were used and some areas um were off limits but yeah general public used to wander over all the time and have a look it was really good really good i think there was supposed to be another event happening there this year so i guess we'll see if that um if that happens or not later in the year yeah, okay no oh, that's so cool i i'm that's the first i've ever heard of that so that's uh mm-hmm. that'd be cool uh cool thing yeah. to see some, some photos of fives, some big fives down there yeah okay oh yeah. that's awesome um yeah, no, it's uh, it's cool to be able to if they can do that. I yeah, hats off to them. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's, a, so, it's an amazing setup. <laughs> sorry. It's an amazing setup. Yeah, no, I'd uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. <laughs> I want to want to see photos. Um, yeah. So you uh said at the start of the show that you are uh, with Ref Sync. So how how did that uh, transition happen from player to referee? Yeah, yeah. Um. To be honest, it's kind of one of those things that just happened. I don't really remember making a conscious decision. It just kind of happened. I, I know um, I'd refed a few events with RefSync. Um, well, maybe not with RefSync, but more kind of just refed a few events in Vic um, prior, probably prior to RefSync coming along, um, back in the early days of, of PAVs, um, and particularly at the um, – the World Series indoor because uh, Mayhem, the team I was on, we had a sponsorship with World Series. Um, we used to ref the three-man kind of newbie tourneys and leagues that they would have there, and that was probably the first time I kind of started refing. And, yeah, um, the Moama events as well, although I probably wouldn't really class that as refing. That was more just standing on the sidelines. Um, yeah. yeah, and then uh, I remember there was a ref course, uh, I think Gillian Fuzzy, um, and Tricky um, hosted a ref course at uh, the Cam Downfields. I remember participating in that. And, yeah, and then I think they had a couple of events that they refed, I think the pubs um, slash Vic Fives, and asked me to come along. And, yeah, kind of picked up from there. I did take a break for a couple of years while I was playing roller derby, um, took up a lot of my time, and, yeah, probably started to get back into refing a bit more maybe about three years ago. Yeah, okay. So, roller derby. Can you can can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, <laughs> so one obscure sport to another. Um, okay. Yeah, I just yeah, my sister started playing roller derby, and a couple of friends of ours did, and kept trying to talk me into it. I'm like, no, I'm too busy. I got paintball all the time. I don't have time to do it. And yeah, eventually one day I was like, oh, I'll just go along and just do it for some fitness. It'll be it'll be great, you know. Um, and absolutely caught the bug. It was 
yeah, really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. It was kind of not too bad at it. Um, met some really fantastic people and, yeah, travelled similar to, I guess, similar to paintball, you know, travelled kind of around Australia to play, played some really big tournaments. Um, yeah, had some fantastic teams and, yeah, unfortunately just injured myself a few too many times and had to make the hard choice to retire. Uh, yeah, and then kind of was for a little while I was refing that as well. I was kind of refing paintball and roller derby at the same time. Cool. Very different styles of refing, but was yeah. doing the refing for both and yeah, just eventually kind of moved back more to refing paintball. Yeah. No, that's uh that's cool. I honestly haven't um I, I know what it is, but I've never I've never gone to watch it or anything. So it'd be something cool. Like if anyone's down in, in Victoria and wants to like where where were you where would you go to see roller derby? Oh, all over the place. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. it's, it's the type of thing that, you know, doesn't really need a special um, area, you know. it's It can be played on basketball courts and stuff like that. You do have to lay a track, but, you know, most of the most of the um, leagues down here know how to do that pretty easily, so they just, you know, lay a track and, and play. And, yeah, there's um, probably not as many bouts happening – down here now they tend to run a bit more of a tournament um approach where yeah like you know a whole bunch of teams will come together three or four times a year um and play tournament series um whereas you know back in the day it used to be big games you'd play you know five or six big games a year whereas now there's tournaments more games more regularly so yeah it's happening a lot but yeah i absolutely loved it uh, and that's where that's where my name nickname crash comes from as well my Roller Derby name was Crash Mandicoot. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of flowed over the, to the refs as well. Now they call me that too. <laughs> oh, that's a cool name. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. So, um, you know, with the with the refereeing, uh, what you said a ref course, what's what's involved in that? Yeah, so um, we, we run a few of them now, but um, there's a little bit of, I guess, rules discussion to start with, you know, talk a little bit about, the rules themselves and then how as refs we you know put that into practice um and then second half of the day is usually out on the field watching players um learning kind of how to move down the field and around the field learning how to communicate with the other refs all that kind of stuff and at the end of the day you have a bit more of an idea of how to ref and yeah it's a good starting point um yeah for anyone who wants to kind of you know do refing, you know, not a lot of people kind of actively go, oh, yeah, I want to be a ref, but, you know, people probably similar, similar to me who want to still be involved in the sport but maybe are past their prime playing days or, you know, we often get people who want to be involved in the sport but maybe financially can't afford to play as often. So, yeah, get into refing and, yeah, it's a good way to, to keep the sport going. We always need refs, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, hats off to any any refs listening and yourself. It's a... Uh... Yeah, without referees, we wouldn't have a game whatsoever. So, it's, no, it's, refs are, uh, yeah, they're the best. <laughs> I've done it a few times, but I'm I'm pretty happy in my in my role at the moment in yeah. paintball. But uh, if that ever didn't happen, yeah, I'd probably be back out refing again. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's yeah, it's different, but it's fun. <laughs> it is different, and yeah, it is fun. Like we we have an absolute ball out on the field. Um. You know, it, it's a it's a long day for us. We're often out there from about nine nine thirty, anywhere up until about five thirty. And you know, for lucky, we'll get a bit of a lunch break. And outside of that, you know, there's a lot of concentration, a lot a lot to take in on the field. But we have a really good time. We laugh around. Um, you know, resting. We have radios, so it's often some amazing banter happening on the radios. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keeps us all keeps us all laughing. And yeah. And then we uh, like to sit down and have a drink at the end of the day. It's really good. It's a great. Yeah, no, awesome. That's uh, that's what the refs are always been like. I remember, like I, I've done uh, refing with refs in before, and they always, I know they, they have the whole thing of like the you're a team. The yeah, the refs are a team, so they yeah they get along really well, and everyone gets around at the end of the day. It's yeah, it's good to see. Yeah, yeah, and we are we're a team. You know, we we try and arrive at events together. We you know. We have lunch together. We go to the pub together afterwards if we can. It's yeah, it's a really good team to be a part of and a really fun team too. Yeah. So um, like speaking of that, like and uh, I was talking about the piano series. I've heard you've been getting over there and and repping that a bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's 
it was a three-man event, now a five-man event, but we, we head over with um, pretty man, much as many refs as we can. We do drive, which um, does make it a little bit difficult sometimes to get refs. We, we take the Friday off work, um, yeah. so it can be a little bit more difficult to kind of get that. And, you know, eight hours in the car is a hefty amount of time to travel with a group of people. But, um, yeah, we, we, we go over three or four times a year, um, ref on the Saturday, and, yeah, come home kind of Saturday night, Sunday, and, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic event and just seeing particularly, you know, what Ash is doing there. He started with a three-man, you know, with a few teams here and there and now we're, he's running a five-man and getting five teams. We're seeing, you know, Jokers and Havoc over there and, um, you know, they're, they're doing really well. They're training. They're getting better every time we go. The tournaments are getting bigger and bigger and more competitive. It's fantastic to see. Yeah, it's always good good fun to see uh anywhere in the in the country grow mm-hmm. and, and do that um yeah so you, they really what, embrace what, new people over there as well um oh, every time we go there's, there's always a couple of newbies and it's it's fantastic that you know these there's always kids jumping on never played paintball properly before and here they are playing a tournament <laughs> yeah it's good that they are uh, yeah it's good that they allow that and, and can facilitate mm-hmm. for that it's um i guess you've got to start somewhere and <laughs> yeah what better way than a tournament so, uh, what you know, besides piano, what are uh, what other series or events does RefSync cover? Yeah, uh, so Vic Fives is a Victorian event. Um, so we 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 ref that one, um, and then the NXL events. Um, so we do the Victorian event, uh, New South Wales event. Um, we were doing the Queensland one last year, um, but now that's Queensland Cup. Um, so we ref that as well. Um, there's the WA events as well. Um, Sammy over there runs those as RefSync. Um, we do the Coffs Harbour sometimes as well when that runs. I think, oh, cool. I think that's it. Yeah. All the, so all much, the travel. <laughs> so much travel. Yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's good to see. And that's, uh, so like Jill and Fuzzy are still sort of running Yeah, Refsync. yeah. yeah. The... So, so Jilly, Fuzzy, um, Buster up in Queensland, Sammy over in WA. They're kind of, I guess, our, you know, our head refs that we have. Um, and there's just a solid ref crew outside of that. Um, BB in New South Wales too. And, yeah, then we've got a lot of, a few senior refs that go to most of the events. Um, and then we've got junior refs as well that, you know, have been riffing with us for a little bit and are still, you know, coming along. But, yeah, we've got really solid refing crews everywhere we ref and, yeah, I can trust when I'm out there reffing with them that everyone out there knows what their job is. Everyone does their job really well. And at the end of the day, you know, we're there to support the paintball and, and keep the game going. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. So uh, if, you know, if anyone listening was thinking about that, I, they wanted to jump into reffing and uh, mm-hmm. what would be the best place to get in contact with, with RefSync? Yeah, yeah, you can um, you can grab Jilly on Facebook um, or I guess any any field operator or event operator will have Jilly's number as well. You can give her a call um, or any just any of the other refs. If if there's a you know a refsync ref at, at your local field, just grab them and have a chat to them about what's entitled what's entitled and, and how you can get started. Yeah, awesome. No, that'd be uh be good. Hope hopefully you guys get some uh some more people because it's yeah. yeah it's one of those things. It'd, it'd be good to be able to have an event. Where I'm sure I don't know what it's like, but I know in the past when I've been refing, it's they're almost to the day before the event that they're, they're, oh, we just need two more people, yeah. we need one more person. So yeah. it'd be good to have yeah, telling would, people to not turn up. <laughs> yeah, we've got quite a good, um, I guess, quite quite a good amount of refs um, that do ref for ref sync. But you know, what we'd love to have is is more ref sync in, in all of the states. Um, so that, you know, we, we don't always have to bring in Fuzzy from, from Queensland or, you know, for the Queensland events, we don't have to bring a couple of our Vic refs in. We'd love to be able to just ref it with refs from, from those um, states. So, yeah, th- that would be the ultimate goal to have, you know, five or six refs in refs in every capital city. Yeah, awesome. We'll, uh, One day. fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, that's it. Can only keep growing. Well, paintball is sort of on, the, like, growing at the moment. So it the is, referees yeah. will happen as well. Absolutely is, yeah. So, uh, well, uh, congratulations because you're my actually my first female guest on the show. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to have. So just wanted to sort of switch gears over to that side of things. Like yeah. I think it's great. You know, my, my sister's involved in paintball and it's always good to see uh, females involved. Like how uh, how did you 
like find the sport when you first got in? Did you did you find it like accommodating to to females? Um, I mean, it was and it wasn't. Um, when I when I started, um, you know, the, I didn't see another female player, and probably until maybe playing one of the Moama events. Um, yeah, the like I you know I started at. at flips extreme in Geelong and there was no other female players there it was you know just all guys and, and every you know all the guys are always absolutely lovely and you know and everyone's really nice and everything but there really wasn't a lot of of ladies playing um in in Victoria especially when I started and um yeah it was made it a little bit more difficult to I guess feel welcome sometimes and and feel like I belonged in the sport it, it did make it a little bit harder um I never really had any problems because I was a female player, if any, if you know anything, everyone was kind of really happy to chat to me and you know talk me through things if I didn't know what was going on or introduce me to other players and stuff. That was really great. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of ladies playing at that point when I started. Um, yeah, not like now. Now you know there's always at least a handful of, of women out on the field at every event. Um, still would be great to see more, but there's definitely more around now. But um, yeah, it was hard when I started. I think um, one of the, I think it was a timing thing for me uh, when I went very first up and played in Super Sevens. Um, you know, Bitchin weren't playing anymore then. There were no women's teams. Um, Divas hadn't started yet, and I think there was like maybe one one other woman playing um, in the whole weekend, and that was like wow. Whereas now, yep. you know, there's so many ladies playing. It's fantastic to see. It's really, really becoming um, a lot more normal for, for female players to be out there. But at the same time, you know, it's still very much a male-dominated sport, very, very, you know, centred around and men. And it would be fantastic if, you know, women, I guess, didn't have to kind of have women's teams just to be able to get onto the field. But, you know, you, you look at teams like the Eskimo Brothers and, you know, there's a few women playing on the Eskimo roster now, you know, across a lot of the different teams and seeing some fantastic talent coming through with women and they're really supporting the female players. It's fantastic to see. Yeah, it is. Um, Like, I do remember that. Like, uh, the very first team I played for, we had a, uh, well, maybe not the first, but uh, yeah, eventually in like the first year, yeah, we, uh, we had Raylene uh, Tresseter um, mm-hmm. uh, playing with us. But yeah, it was it was like that, yeah. I think um, she was probably one of the the only girls around then. Well, the I bitchin' sort of was sort of in and out as well. It was, um, yeah. It it had did come and go, but it was, you know, to see a girl at a field was was a a rarity back then. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Did, did, like, would there be anything you would think that the sport, like, you'd like to see different in the sport? Like, you think that could be could help uh, women get into it? Yeah. Um... Probably, yeah, I, I think it'd be fantastic to see um, more opportunity for, you know, I guess girls to get involved. Um, you know, you often hear about, you know, guys getting into the sport because they went and played a punter day. Um, usually it's a bucks party or something like that. And, you know, I think if we can market even just punter ball more at women as well and get more women in through that, through punter ball, I think that'll help the sport grow from that you know that angle that's one way um and just you know the media that we have you know we talked before about you know some of the things that are available now um for paintballers to consume you know it'd be, it'd be fantastic to feature more women on those channels as well um you know wimpy's fantastic he you know featured um a jersey from christy stevens uh the other day which was absolutely fantastic to see you know we can have more kind of i guess female presence in in that regard that'd be fantastic too but yeah, I think there's, you know, little bits and pieces happening already. Um, we had a piano event last year and, you know, I think our best and fairest player on the on the field was Belle Chang. So fantastic to see her kind of get that recognition at an event as being, a, a you know, a good player. Um, yeah, more, more kind of recognition for the female players as well would be fantastic. I think that would help to... Yeah, show show other women that might be interested in playing that hey, you know, you can go out there and you can be successful in this sport. Yeah, that's um, it's a good point. You, you know, you bring up with getting them uh, like girls coming in through like punter paintball because that's you know the the law's only now just dropping to to twelve in uh, New South Wales. I I was thinking about that a bit earlier. 
um, you know, there, there, there's some, there could be a room for like, to, uh, what am I trying to say? There needs to be a bit more for like kids to get into the sport. Yeah, like it, it, the marketing really has to change um, and be a bit more centered towards that. And I think that can also help, um, yeah, get girls in the sport. Like if, if the marketing was to change to try and get kids in, like, yeah, what's, who's to say it couldn't, couldn't change for that as well. It, um, yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, it's only the future, what the future can hold. But I guess if girls, if more girls, it's one of those things, if, if more girls are playing, when you come out and you see girls on the field, I, I guess it hopefully will give them a bit more, well, you know, that I can get out and do it. And, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, just as players in general, it's, it's something we should all be conscious of. You know, if you see someone who you think might really enjoy the sport, if they're a female, bring them out. Let them see other other girls playing. You know, don't think that oh, I'll invite my mates or along and, you know, their girlfriends can stay at home. Bring their girlfriends as well. Maybe they'll have fun. Maybe they'll want to play too. Yeah, I do remember when I was ref, like when I used to ref groups of punters that, oh, the girls would just beat up. Like the girls would uh, just go so much harder than the guys. <laughs> There'd be one or two girls in the group and they would just like rip on everyone. Yeah. yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think uh, maybe people just sort of underestimated them a bit. I, I'm yeah. not quite sure what it was there, but I do. I do remember a few times that happening. Yeah, and, and I think generally we're past that. You know, as a sport, kind of, you know, underestimating our female players. We've got some fantastic talent out there. I think we're kind of past that, which is absolutely amazing because, you know, five, ten years ago that probably wasn't the case. Um, but yeah, there's still room to improve there. I, um, we had one of the, another one of the piano events we had last year. Um, there was these uh, two young girls playing on one of the teams over there. Um, I think maybe oh, I don't even know how old they were. Maybe like ten. Um, cool. My gosh, they were owning. They were amazing. They were bumping halfway up the field. They'd never really played paintball before. I think they were someone's um, nieces or something. And, oh, they had an absolutely fantastic time. And I'd love to see, you know, more girls coming through, you know, that young kind of that 12 age limit, you know, in New South Wales. And I think it's 16 now in Vic and, and getting girls that young in to, you know, experience the sport as a sport. I think they absolutely love it. Yeah, and I think um... – like paintball being such a young sport that that now you will see like families getting into it because it, it's only That's just crazy. over 40 years old so yeah um, you know just imagine all you know all that all the players that are kind of getting to that point where their kids are starting to come through don't just bring your son along to the event bring your daughter as well you know she's probably going to have a great time yeah well it's, i've got two girls i don't have a choice they're both coming to the field yeah, so <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, oh, they're going to get out there whether they like it or not <laughs> Yes. so uh you know uh something that i'm asking all my guests that come on the show um is there someone that you would uh like to see on the show or someone that you think people might like to hear their story yeah yeah absolutely um so i think butchie um he runs the hustle team down here and he's been playing for quite a few years in vic and, and you know has played in kind of sydney and, and overseas as well i think he's got a great perspective on um, the tournament scene in Victoria and, you know, I guess a little bit different from me where I kind of went a little bit further afield and liked to play in Sydney and floated around between different teams. You know, butchie has got a really great perspective of, you know, playing on Hustle for so many years and, and before that on a couple of other teams. And, yeah, I think he'd be fantastic to hear his progress through the sport and, you know, how he's kind of gotten to the point now where, yeah, his team Hustle is one of the top teams in Vic. Yeah, oh, that's cool. So, um, Butchie, what's his full name? I always forget everything when I'm on when I'm on the show. Great question. Yeah, oh, that's all right. I'll be able to find <laughs> it on Facebook. I'll have to find it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> Don't know him as anything else. So, um, you know, while you while you're on the line as well, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Sponsors or just just people? Anyone that's uh, helped you out in your career that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Ref Sync, absolutely. Uh, you know, Jillian Fuzzy have taken a lot of time to help train me up to to the point where I you know I, I'm a bit of a head ref at some of the fields and some of the events and you know it's because of, of the training that they've put into me to get to that point so definitely big shout out to Jillian Fuzz. Um, McDev uh, you know back when I was playing more regularly you know they helped me out a little bit with some sponsorship and always looked after me and you know they have do have such a fantastic 
of fantastic products available and you know as i said you know they're just at the end of the phone if you want to talk to them about you know how to fix something or how to get the most out of your marker and how to tech it correctly you know they're always happy to help so big shout out to mcdev um yeah outside of that just yeah i'd like to probably just say thanks to everyone who's played with me or given me a chance to play on their team um chimpy always love playing on legion with chimpy um Neil Wheatley spent a lot of time playing, um, you know, member days and whatnot with Neil Wheatley out at Caram Downs. Um, Matt out at Sniper's Den, I used to do some punter reffing for him. He's always fantastic and he does a lot for the sport, particularly with Vic Five. So big shout out to Matt. And, yeah, that's probably it. Just, uh, yeah, hi to all the players out there and hopefully we'll all be back playing again soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. So, well, speaking of that, you know, what's uh, what's on the cards for your future? Are you, uh, you know, are you going to get back with a gun on your hands or, or yeah, stay on the absolutely. Side? <laughs> I technically never really retired. I just yeah, okay. yeah, just uh, didn't really book in a lot of future events. But um, absolutely be playing again. The plan was um, we were having a retro round for Vic Fives this year to celebrate the um, ten year anniversary of the, of the tournament series and. We were doing a, you know, capture the flag type of thing, um, points for the flag, points for the hang, all of that. And, um, nice. The plan had been to play that, but it was postponed. So hopefully that'll run at some point. Um, I'll play that. And then, yeah, I'm really keen to get up to sevens and, and play with um, the Eskimo brothers again. Really like to, you know, give AMS or semi-pro a go again. Um, yeah, just to play that tournament series. There's a couple of players up there on the Eskimos I'd love to get out on the field with again. So looking forward to doing that at some point and then just refing all the events all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh it's good it's good to hear so um just uh, quickly with the with the retro round did you say that was 10 men or is it going to be 10 men or no i was... think, think five men yeah all right. uh, maybe seven i can't remember and i think five men um but yeah just old school rules it was, yeah it sounded really exciting there's nice. a lot of people coming out to play that haven't played for a while so really looking forward to that so hopefully we'll have a new date for that in the second half of the year or you know even maybe early next year if we have to yeah that would be uh cool to see well if uh, i guess now if things are being postponed if anyone wants to to check it out now's the time yeah. you've uh yeah. make plans <laughs> yeah reach out to me we'll you know jump on a team <laughs> yeah awesome well uh amanda thanks uh so much for sitting down and, and chatting with us no worries thanks for having me yeah awesome and uh hopefully we can we can uh, see you up at, up at Super 7s one day soon. Absolutely. <laughs> or absolutely. even on, on a paintball field anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, take care and I'll speak to you soon. Wonderful. Thanks, Scott. That's a wrap on another episode of Down Under Paintball. Thank you once again to Amanda Andrews for sitting down and having a chat. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in and checking out the show. Again, I say it every week, but I'm enjoying the feedback immensely. Thank you so much, everyone, who's been getting in touch and letting me know their stories or stories of people around them. So just keep them coming. It's good to see. Don't forget about the Patreon I have going as well. Any supporters of Patreon can jump on the private Facebook group, and we're having some good chats about upcoming episodes. I've been asking questions on there that we'll be featuring in upcoming shows as well. If you wanted to check out that short bus episode that we talk about in the show, it's in the show notes. I'll also put it on the Facebook page. It features a few other people besides Legion that some are still around today, and I think the short bus videos are a great look back in time at how Australian paintball has grown. So thank you, everybody, once again. This is Down Under Paintball. See you next week.